Acting Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Omar Damagun, has retained his position. The PDP conducted its 98th National Executive Committee next meeting at the party's secretariat in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. In a communique issued after the meeting, National Publicity Secretary of the party, Debo Logwagba, said the NEC urged all members to continue to work for the success of the PDP. The National Working Committee of the party passed a vote of confidence on Damagun. Well, for more on the 98th National Executive Council meeting of the PDP, I'm joined by Senator Gabriel Suswam, former lawmaker and former Benue State Governor. Senator Suswam, thank you so much for joining us on Arise Prime Time. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, where do I start? So many things going on in the PDP. And um, word on the street is that you are the next national chairman of your party. Is that correct? Well, I'm not sure about that. I, I aspire to uh, be the chairman of the party, substantive chairman of the party after IU. Uh, you know that um, when uh, crisis erupted in PDP and IU uh, was suspended, uh, it was expected that the deputy chairman not would act for some time. And um, then a replacement, according to the letters or the articles of the constitution of the party, um, a replacement will be selected from the area where you come from to replace him substantively as the national chairman. Unfortunately, it has taken more than one year. That didn't happen. So there is this, or rather, there was this general agitation from the North Central yes. that we must take our rightful place. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So today there was a neck meeting after yeah. a, a very long time. Yeah. And a vote of confidence was passed on Damago. So he retains his position temporarily. Yeah. Are you shocked by that development? No, no, not at all. Uh, I'm not shocked because um, uh, the party is made up of um, stakeholders and the organs of parties that take decision. Uh, the caucus of the party, the national caucus of the party, met last night. And uh, in that meeting, I'm not, I wasn't a party to it, but from what I've heard, uh, it was decided that in order not to create further tension within the party, that the acting national chairman should be given additional months uh, to act in that capacity. Uh, and then Congress will be conducted. And then after that, by August, when the ne next neck meeting is, uh, is to be had, then the issue of a substantive national chairman will be addressed. Um, and the North Central, as much as we didn't feel okay with that, we are good party people and we felt that, well, if that is the decision of the party, then we we'll abide by it. And that is exactly what happened next. So it wasn't anything. It started last night. We had uh, BOT early this morning from 10 to about 2 o'clock. And all of these issues were addressed uh, uh, within these two organs of the party. So NEC. Uh, was the last organ of the party that addresses that issue. So uh, as much as there were dissenting voices, uh, we have agreed in order not to create unnecessary confusion within the party, we agree that we we'll wait in August. So uh, it seems that some people in the party won today having the upper hand. And like, uh, like, well, like you I, said, no, the North No, Central. I wouldn't say that because yeah. the, the, the national chairman of the party and the BOT chairman solicited for understanding and compromise within the party. So I wouldn't say that some people had upper hands uh, in uh, what happened today. Uh, it was just that people felt that, well, let us not put our interests over and above that of the generality of the party people. And uh, so we agreed uh, that I'm an interested party. But once the issue was raised that let us not hit the polity unnecessarily, uh, let us wait till August. Between now and August, it's not much time where the next neck will be had. And then, of course, the issue of the North Central taking what rightly 
according to the letters of the Constitution as encapsulated uh, in Section uh, 47 sub 6, uh, we take over substantively the national chairman of the party and, and conclude the tenure of Dr. Yochayu. Is that why you said that the North Central is not happy from, from the outcome? Yeah, we are, we, are, we are not happy because we are expecting that that will happen because um, some other zone is eating into our position for more than a year. So we are not happy, but as good party people, we accepted the decision of the caucus of the party, the BOT, and then the neck of the party. Um, when the time comes uh, to run for party chairman, which you are interested in, yeah. I mean, it's, it's big shoes to fill. You have had um, great men previously as, as chairman of the PDP. So, for instance, the late Dr. Alex Akwame, you had um, Alhaji Mamanga Tuko, Banabazgi Made, um, Chief Audu Ogbe, Dr. Okwesilia Zengwodo, and, and a host of other people. Do you think that you are qualified to step into those shoes and what would you do differently? Well, the first chairman was actually uh, Chief uh, Solomon La, the former governor of Plateau State. That was the first chairman of PDP. Uh, well, let me say that uh, uh, based on credentials, I believe that I'm eminently qualified to be the chairman because I started with PDP at inception in 1998. I won election in 1999 uh, to the House of Representatives, and I spent eight years in the House of Representatives. Uh, from House of Representatives, I became the governor of my state, Benue State, and I spent eight years as governor of that state, participating fully in all party activities. After that, I became a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under PDP. So there are very few people who have the kind of credentials that I have in PDP. So I have, I have, I'm, I'm more like an encyclopedia of what has happened. I can, I can conveniently relate to all the characters, all the major characters, all the stakeholders in PDP. And I think that what PDP need is somebody who can walk up to any person, talk to the person and seek his understanding on the issues and be able to say, look, at this time, in the history of, 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 of this party, this was what happened, and this was how it was resolved. I've participated fully in most of the conspiracies within PDP. So I'm knowledgeable enough, I'm experienced enough uh, to be that national chairman that can reconcile all the contending factions, not faction, all the divergent views and opinions within the party. Because PDP doesn't have a faction. Yes. So it's good that you brought up the foundational you know, issue, that you're a foundational member. And yeah. I want to go to the foundational members. Again, Alex Akweme, Solomon yeah. Lai, which <coughs> you mentioned, yeah. Chief Bola Ige, Abu Bakar Rimi, Rimi yeah. um, Malama Damu Chiroma, Professor Jerry Gana. A lot Dr. of leading Dr. lights. Ayu. Yes, a lot of Jim leading Kumadia. lights. Uh, yeah. you know, and the party from 1999, there was so much hope. Well, they did relatively well under President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo. Obasanjo, but the PDP seems to have fallen. Are you happy with where the party is today? Absolutely no. But let me say that uh, I'm a student of history, and uh, if we look at even kingdoms, you look at the Roman Empire, you look at the Bene Kingdom, all of that, at some point, something was snapped. So PDP is not an exception. Even you, you, you used to hear about the United Kingdom. It was as if there was no any other country other than the United Kingdom. Today, there are so many countries that have surpassed uh, development in terms of technology and everything that uh, we used to hear of the United Kingdom. So at some point uh, in the development or evolution of, of, of a society, uh, some things we snapped out, we uh, delay that, or rather, um, wh what a correct adjective will I use? Rather, reduce the, that, 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 that development. And so, PDP, when we started, PDP spent 16 years. We had Obasanjo. Obasanjo was a very experienced person, somebody who has been head of state before, a well trained military person. Obasanjo gave leadership. He selected people to work with him who were equally very experienced. People like the late Adamuchi Roma, a host of those other people who 
knew what Nigeria needed, who were pre-independent children. So who knew when Nigeria became independent, participated in the independence of Nigeria. So they appreciated uh, the issues that were affecting the country and were able to contribute immensely uh, to where we are today. Now, after Obasanjo, that was where problems started. Uh, Obasanjo so, handed, specifically, you said something, something snapped. What yes. do you think snapped? That is, that is where I'm getting to. After Obasanjo, he handed over the presidency of this country, the leadership of this country, to a gentleman who was a man of solid character. Unfortunately, he was sick, uh, President uh, Musa Yaradwa, and died. Now, President Jonathan took over. And President Jonathan took over, and then people from the north began to agitate that he was eating into what rightly was theirs. Yaradwa was expected to spend eight years. He spent about two years and died. Good law concluded it. So there was this very strong agitation within uh, the northern region that, look, we need to get this back. In spite of that, they agree that it's okay. Let Jonathan go ahead and complete the tenure of Yaradwa. And the expectation was that after that, it will come back to the north. Okay, so we, we, we now that was where the problem started. Right. When Jonathan insisted on contesting outside of the tenor of yes. Yaradwa, yes, then we begin to have internal uh, uh, attrition. Yes, there were attrition within the party, and people started working against the party. That look, if you had completed the tenor of Yaradwa as a southerner this presidency should come back to the north. So why is he saying that he will contest? So there began to be crises within the party, and we lost that election. So, so that was the beginning yes. of actual attrition and crisis within the so party. So let me come in here. You narrate a, a history we a lot of people know about, yeah. but it also throws up another issue, which was the fact that President Yaradwa late was sick. And there was the view that why would you support a man that was sick to take over the president? No, well, and no, then he died shortly nobody, after that. No, no person is God. When President Buhari came into power, there was this speculation, very in high places, that he wasn't going to last for one year. None of us is God. President Buhari spent eight years, and he's still living. And you, you see him, he's looking stronger, even after spending eight years. So there's no way that Obasanjo is not God. All of us, once you hit the age of 50, there's no 50-year-old person that can say that he does not suffer from one ailment or the other. That is not to say that you will not be able to perform a function when given to you. So yes, President Yaradwa was sick. Obasanjo was not God, so he wouldn't have known that President Yaradwa was going to die two years down the road. And so... Uh, it, wasn't his it wasn't his fault that he did that. But among the people who contended or contested for that, he saw in Yaradwa somebody who was patriotic enough, somebody who was solid enough to move this country to the next level. And with my interaction with the late Yaradwa, may his all rest in peace, Yaradwa was a very solid uh, president. Unfortunately, we lost a president that I believe that would have changed a lot of things in this country. Right. I had personal interaction, I had related with him, I traveled, we had the opportunity of meeting other president with him. And I would sit down in a meeting and I would see how he would conduct a meeting with foreign president. Right. And, and so he died. And so a lot of things happened thereafter. So do you think that the health status of intending political leaders should be made public? No, 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 it should, it, 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 we should be worried about it. You know, in developed countries like America, that is an issue. Yes. If a president uh, had very serious health issues, um, people should know so that it can help in determining whether they want to go with that person or not. And so I think that since our democracy is modeled against uh, the backdrop of uh, American uh, democracy. We should also be interested in the head uh, status of any person who intend to become a president. Chief Edwin Clark, a member of your party, advised the PDP to dissolve the National Working Committee 
Um, uh, he says that this is to stop al Hajj Atiku Abu Bakr and uh, Minister Yisong Wike from destroying the party. What's your view on that? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that the National Working Committee uh, should be dissolved as much as I'm dissatisfied with uh, some of the things that are happening over there. Uh, what I would say is that the, the, the organs of the party uh, should um, work better than they are doing now. And uh, you, you, have, you have like the national caucus of the party, which is made up of, of, of uh, very experienced past president, past vice president, past uh, presiding officers of the National Assembly. That is a very strong organ of the party that can look any person in the face and tell you that, look, where you are going is wrong. So once those organs of the party become active, the BOT is the conscience of the party. And BOT is made up of very, the are early people. The are early people. Yes, I, uh, I, I, and, I was at your secretariat uh, today and I saw a lot of elderly people. people and I'm going to ask a the, question on that. Th these are people that can look at governor in the face and say, look, governor, you are doing wrong. So if those organs of the party are doing what they should do, then there will be no basis to say that they should dissolve the National Working Committee. National Working Committee is made up of uh, mostly young people. And, uh, and so I wouldn't uh, support the idea that they should be dissolved. Yes, there are issues and very fundamental issues uh, for that. But then if these two organs that I've mentioned are working and working very well and doing what they're supposed to do, they will be advising and calling the National Working Committee to order. You know, so we don't need to dissolve any person because dissolution of the National Working Committee is a crisis point. You don't need that. You just need that. They should call them, sit them down and say, look, this uh, trajectory you are taking will take us nowhere. And so you must take this direction. And uh, that is what I would suggest that. And from what happened in the last two days, uh, it does seem like these two organs that I mentioned, the National Caucus was said last night, uh, BOT was heard this morning, and then NEC. And uh, I participated at least in the BOT. I'm not a member of the National Caucus. And so from discussions and deliberations, it seems that people are trying to stand up and say, look, we've not done what we should do. So let us stand up so that this party can come back to where it started and what it should be. You spoke of divergent views and reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be tough, won't it? Yeah, you know, there's no reconciliation that is easy. When you say, when you say reconciliation, it means that something has gone fundamentally wrong. That is why you are even mentioning reconciliation. And so that is not an easy thing. But once you have honest and um, people of character uh, who will sit down and reconcile people, uh, I believe that we will achieve that. Today, the, 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 the NEC have constituted committees, disciplinary committees headed by Chibi Tomikimi, reconciliation committee headed by former Senate President uh, Buka, Bukora Saraki. These are men of integrity. These are very solid Nigerians. And I believe that if they do what, is need, what needs to be done, PDP will come back. PDP is a party that has resource. When you look at the ca caliber of people within PDP, there's no single political party in this country that has a caliber of people. And I, so I don't think that if they're honest in doing what um, they're asked to do, that PDP will not be a party that will provide a very strong alternative to what we're witnessing today. Um, many people within your party, and even outside your party, normal Nigerians yeah. really feel that the PDP needs reforms. And um, let me quote uh, Chief Edwin Clark again, because he, 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 he mentioned that he said that uh, Dr. Okwesilia Zenwodo, who was once a chairman, had suggested that um, membership drives uh, be made through you know, the process whereby every member of the party pays a membership due, yeah. so that a few money backs do not take over the party and hold it to ransom. I, Why is I, that I delay? Agree, I, I agree totally with him because PDP was built on the principle of inclusiveness. 
it wasn't one person that owns the party. You mentioned uh, the founding members of the party. And uh, there was no one person, even Obasanjo as president then, never pretended that he's the owner of the party because there were people who actually founded the party and said this was a party for the people, the People's Democratic Party, party for the people. You know, that was built on a democratic principle. And so if every person have a sense of ownership in the party, then there's no one person who will come up and say that, look, because I'm giving money to the party, so I should dictate the tune as, as the, 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 the saying commonly say that he who pays the piper dictate the tune. What is worrying the party now is exactly what you have said. There are some individuals who feel just because they are giving some money to the party, so they will dictate what happened within the party. And that is what is causing the crisis in the party. So once we begin, all of us are be begin to pay dues, those dues will be put together, and it will be money enough to pay the salaries of the permanent staffs there, and attend to party activities. In that wise, no one person will come out and start dictating that you do this, you do this, because I'm the one giving money for the activities of the party. So I agree totally with uh, the other statement uh, in that regards. Well, why is there a delay to carry out this reform, which is critical, as you have just said, and if you become the national chairman, is this something you would definitely look into? Well, you know, as, as you know, the first issues that you raised here were the issues that afflicted the party after the 2003 elections. And uh, we have not recovered from this, uh, this crisis and this affliction uh, within the party. So uh, I think now that we have begun to sit down together and, and um, ventilate uh, all the issues, uh, we'll be able to come to that. But one of the things that I would do as chairman of this party is to introduce discipline. In any organization where there's no discipline, even in the even in your house, between husband, wife, and children, if there's no discipline in the house, you find children, if you have your child who will go out, a child of maybe 15 years, who will go out and come back in 12 midnight, and then you just laugh with, with how him and say, ah, we're done. Of course, that child gets important. He can come back 3, 4 a.m. the next day. So in PDP, discipline is the key word. What makes you think where others have failed that you can you know, compel members to be disciplined? Yeah, because I've been able to, like I said, in my, my, my sojourn in the National Assembly, I, I have been chairman of many committees, many, many committees, and I became governor of a whole state. And I, I can beat my chest and say that at least I was able to uh, contend with all the divergences, we'll because in the state too, you have even people of the same tribe. When you go to the same tribe, they become sectional. When you go to those sections, they go to kindred level. So for you to be able to uh, aggregate all these divergent opinion and, 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 and preside over a state uh, for eight years with no major crisis, it means that I'll be able to do it. And like I said, most of these major uh, stakeholders within PDP are people that in one way or the other I have worked with them. I know, I know virtually all of them by first name. There are people that I can sit down with them, appreciate what the issues are with them, and then be able to uh, sit down and, uh, and, and address them. So I believe that given the opportunity, uh, I will be able to uh, turn things around within PDP, reconcile yeah. the content in this right. and the divergent views. Right. Uh, one, one more uh, thought from Chief, Chief Edwin Clark. He says, yeah. and I quote, Rumors have it that Atiku is already preparing for the 2027 presidential election. If this is allowed, PDP will collapse as the second principal party in the country today. Is he right? You see, these are some of the views that create unnecessary agitation within the party. Has Atiku mentioned to him that he said rumors? Why do you, as a stakeholder, as an elder statement, work on rumors? When you say rumors, you are not saying something you know. Rumors 
uh, in the realms of speculations, uh, things that you are not sure of, things that you hear in beer parlors. Some people, when they sit in beer parlors with a cold beer, there's nothing they can't say, things that they don't know. So why will you predicate your own decision on beer parlor talks? Has Atiku told any one of them that he wants to contest in 2027? Of course, no. You said rumors. So I don't think that we should hit the polity unnecessarily because you have people sitting in beer parlors and speculating. I but don't, apart I don't, from I don't speculation, but you understand that um, whoever is entrusted politicians, they work underground. So if you listen and you're involved, you would know what is going on. As I'm sitting here, there are people speculating a lot of things on my head that I don't even know. Just because they've seen me probably talking to you on television, they say, well, this person has an ambition somewhere. So it is not true. Speculations and rumors are things that people imagine. It's within people's imagination. Atiku has contested for president a couple of times. Yes. And so he lost the last election. And people generally will feel that, well, if Atiku is still within the party and showing interest, it means that he still have interest. It might not necessarily be so. It might just be somebody who is very interested in party politics and making sure that the country is run very well. It knows, it's not necessarily that he wants to contest. Okay. But let me ask you this question. What is wrong, even if you want to contest? It's not in my place. The Constitution, <laughs> yes. the Constitution of the Federal Republic gives all of us, even if for 100 years, and you think that you have the capacity, you can still uh, run for office. So, Minister, Minister Yisom Wike attended the meeting today. Were you surprised because, you know, is he PDP, is he APC? Where is he? He was, he well, was at, well, at the PDP well, secretariat. I, well, I think that you should ask that, him that question. But I would like to say this. This is the first time that we're experiencing that kind of thing in this country. When uh, in 1983, 82 leading to 83, when MPM won election, uh, and MPM went into alliance with the MPP then. It was MPP and MPM going into alliance, where MPP presented, I think, about three ministers, three individuals who were made minister by Shagari. In this case, there's no alliance between PDP and APC. But if the president, in his own wisdom, decide to select somebody from, a, from PDP to work with him, and he's comfortable that that person remains in another party. It is not for me to question that. But I have a problem with it as an individual. I what, have a problem with it. What that. problem do you have with I it? I have a problem because there's conflict of interest. Yes. Because in the meeting today, uh, the speakers upon speakers contended that APC is a party that is anti-people. The policies of APC are completely anti-people. And he was sitting there. And so that to me um, uh, shows that there will be problem with that. There is a problem with that, like I said. Because every person who spoke uh, in, in, in the meeting of PDP today criticized the policies of the APC government. And so if you are serving in APC government, and you can sit down where uh, your party, the person you are serving, is being criticized, and you are unable to defend that person, then there's a, there, there's a problem with that. So for me, I have a problem with it. But if the president finds him worthy to work with him, that is different. But it's also the fact that people say that there's this. No. Once, if there was an alliance of PDP and APC, that's a different matter. Right. You will know that PDP will now select people they want and say, Mr. President, these are the people who are giving you to work with you. Right. In this case, the president on his own found somebody worthy in PDP to work with. Yes. He's working with him, but um, he attended, he still says, and if the president is comfortable with him, belonging to another party, attending the functions of that other party and working with him. That is purely within the prerogatives and the purview of the president. It's not for me to comment on that. I'd like to ask you, if you become the chairman, 
what would you do about the situation? How would you handle it? Because it's delicate. As the national chairman of the party, yes. I will seek to meet with the president. I will seek to meet, because if the president will select one of my own to work with him, I should be able to sit down with the president and talk with him and appreciate what he wants. I also sit down with the person working with the president and actually discuss meaningfully and say, look, you belong to this party, you are working with the president. And there's conflict of interest. There's no two ways about it. Because as chairman, I do not agree with the economic policies of this government. First, you remove subsidy, you float your currency, you enhance the NPR, that is the borrowing rate, and now you increase the electricity tariff. As PDP, there's no way that I will agree with that. And those are policy, economic policy that are completely anti-people. And so if one of my own is working in a government that is anti-people, and I'm preaching that, um, you know, I want a change, I want a better life for the Nigerian people, there are contradictions, uh, you know, in real terms. So, you know, these are issues that, as national chairman, I can sit down with the person working with the president, we'll discuss. And I'll seek right. to meet with the president himself uh, to see why uh, he will want to work with somebody in another party. And um, so I think that, um, like I said, uh, that, that there's definitely conflict of interest. Senator Gabriel Suswan, thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.